Hi, it's Rich with Rich Bound Photography, Sacramento, California, and welcome to my YouTube channel, Tips and Tricks for Real Estate Photography, where we talk about all things real estate photography related. And I want to thank Adorama for sponsoring this channel. They are a great place to shop, great support. If you're going to buy something, please use that link the affiliate link in the show notes below. So I just want to say thank you for checking in. Today is a subject that I get a lot of questions on, uh, especially with the people that are a little newer to doing um, flash ambient photography known as flambient. Yes, I call it flambient. Um, you can call it whatever the heck you want, flash ambient blend, flashulence, or whatever you want to call it. Um, but I just want to show you some images and show you what I'm looking for in my ambient exposure, which I'm going to blend with my flash exposure to give me my final output and the desired effect. So sit back, let's watch this tutorial, and hopefully it'll help connect some things for you. And you'll get to really internalize the concept of what we're looking for in our ambient layer. And I'm going to just delve into what we're looking for in our flash layer too, because the two go hand in hand, side by side. Okay, let's go into Lightroom Classic. So what are we looking for in our ambient? Why are we even using an ambient? Well, in the uh, process of flambient or flash ambient exposure, we want to take the best parts of an ambient shot, as you see here. And by the way, I'm in Lightroom Classic, so if you're not using Classic and you're using CC, I urge you to also use Classic or only use Classic uh, because it is really what you want to be using and you will not have the same screen, Lightroom screen, as I have. So really, simply, the ambient exposure is there to add certain things and we're going to combine it with the flash exposure which adds certain things. The flash exposure has some good parts, like it makes the colors really accurate. It is making it very crisp. It's also exposing for the windows. So this flash image is ISO 320, and it's at 1 one sixtieth of a second. So uh, this is also at f7.1, but I'm using a Samyang 12 millimeter manual lens, so you can't see up here, you can't see my um, aperture, but it's 7.1, and that's what I'm doing all of these shots at. But the, the shutter speed will change depending on the room, the color of the room, the uh, amount of light in there, so there's no way to really say what you're going to be getting. But the flash image has some good parts, but it also has some bad parts. It has a, a lot of dark back here, so I could easily put a light back there, but instead I'm doing let the ambient do the heavy lifting and using the ambient exposure um, to lighten up the back area and also take away some of this flashiness. But let's get away from the flash image. Let's really concentrate on the ambient image. So what am I looking for? Well, one thing I could do is look up here at my histogram on the right hand side. Now a histogram is a representation of your exposure. And it can be done in color histogram or just a, an exposure histogram. Um, but what I'm looking for is not going to be in this histogram. So generally, in a lot of photography, we can rely upon our histogram. But in this type of photography, many times we're trying to fool the camera and and to thinking that uh, what we want. We, want, we don't want the camera controlling us. We want to control the camera. And because you're seeing so much blown out areas, you can see up here if I put my uh, cursor on this arrow right on the right hand side of the histogram, you can see that it's, it's all white and it's overexposed with no information there. And also in the ambient exposure, I've got no complete black totally under under uh, exposed but many times i will have something completely underexposed in the in the ambient image but right here i've got uh the bell curve is a little overexposed right here 
and it shows uh, what I'm kind of looking for. I'm looking for overall luminosity or luminance or exposure value, exposure. I don't want to get too complicated on, on this, but what you're looking for is three things from the ambient exposure. One is we're looking for exposure. We want to have good luminosity throughout the areas that we will need. The other thing we're going to want is to have good logical shadows. And what I mean by that is look at this shot, the flash shot. You can see the flash shot is lit from camera. And in it being logical, the light would be coming from the window towards us. But if you can see this image, it looks like the light is coming from camera, which it is. It's coming from my flash. So we want to have overall luminosity and we want to have logical shadows. So these shadows right here, and I'll show you in Photoshop, are going to bring back the life, uh, the, the uh, reality to the image. So that's why I use the ambient exposure. And the third thing is, and I don't think you're really going to see it here, but yeah, a little bit. You can see up here I have a flash shadow. So my ambient, I want to be able to fix certain things, which would be um, a ceiling fan shadow or a light fixture like this. I also want to add in, you know, logical shadows here, exposed for here. So those are the things I'm looking for. Now my ambient exposure, I didn't mention this, is showing you that it is ISO 500, where I normally keep the same ISO, but for this one, I increased my ISO. Actually, I decreased my ISO for the flash shot because I was at max sync speed, which is a whole nother video, but my max sync speed of my Sony camera is 1 1 60th of a second. And I couldn't get the exposure I wanted at 1 1 60th at 500 ISO, so I dropped down my ISO to uh, 320 which gave me a little bit of a darker image, okay? So anyway, let's go back into ambient. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna prepare now my ambient exposure. Whereas you can see in the flash exposure, I've got good color. So let's talk about white balance. What am I looking for? Well, one thing I'm gonna do is do a little preset, which I use, and many times you will have seen me do this on my videos, but it's called ambient yellow out. And look what it does. Basically, it takes out the highlights. It um, increases the shadow by just a little bit. Um, and it goes about 24, 20, 24% um, of whites. Bring the blacks down. Texture, I leave alone. Clarity, I increase the clarity of my ambient image because I find it gets a little more crispness and sharpness to my, my image. Dehaze, I also add a little teeny bit, nine. So always, I always say, be really careful with dehaze because you can easily go overboard with dehaze. And I add in a little bit of vibrance and a little bit of saturation. But here's the main thing I do with my ambient out preset. And remember, presets just get you in the ballpark. They're not going to work perfect for every shot. But you'll find you do the same thing over and over again on many shots and you can make a preset to help speed your day up. And you can find those presets on um, our Shooting Spaces uh, we uh, podcast website, and uh, we have all my presets there. If you choose to buy your preset, and I'll have the link in the show notes, but you can also make your own presets, which are very easy, okay? Because presets are nothing magical, but a lot of people like for me to do the work for you. So I'm also taking out my orange, about 30%, I'm taking out yellow about 30%. Let me just bring it down to 30%. And I'm bringing down the blues because many times when you take out orange and yellow, it's replaced by the blue from the windows. So I just find in general, I can do this and it's giving me a little bit, um, getting me in the ballpark a little bit more. The other thing I'm going to do here is because I need a little more exposure right here. What I'm looking for in my ambient shot, and you can see here it's very dark, and my finished image is brighter. So what I'm going to do is before I bring it into Photoshop, I'm going to use my gradient filter uh, tool, and I'm going to click on that, and I'm just going to add a little bit of exposure, like not even one stop, like three quarters of a stop, okay? And I'm just going to drag that over. And actually, I need a little bit more, so I'm just going to raise this up. And you can see it's exposing 
for a particular area. Okay. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make it a little cooler. There we go. And I'm going to take out a little bit of saturation. Now, please understand, these adjustments are so fast and easy for me because I've done them a million times. So what I urge you to do if you're new to Lightroom, new to real estate photography, is spend some time playing with all the tools. Find the uh, local adjustment brush, the gradient filter adjustment, um, the white balance eyedropper tool, uh, all really, really good things to work on, okay? Here's the white balance eyedropper tool, which I could use, but I don't think I need to because the white balance looks pretty good. I don't even like it with the tool. Then I'm just going to hit Command X and go backwards. I mean, I'm sorry, Command Z and go backwards. So this is what I'm looking for in my ambient shot right here for to mix in with my flash shot. Again, I've got luminosity for here. I've got shadows for here. I can fix this little shadow from this uh, ceiling light and there I go. Okay, so let's highlight the ambient shot and highlight the flash shot and let's go and uh, bring it into Photoshop CC. Okay, I'm just going to go right click, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. Okay. And while I've got you here, I want to mention also, I do a lot of coaching. So if you're having issues, troubles with the videos, and it's just not making sense, you can find the information in the show notes for my personal one-on-one -on -one coaching, which um, is done by Zoom. It's very effective, especially now in the time of COVID, and it is really going to help you um, get faster and understand this whole thing better. And I don't know. There we go. Sometimes it takes a little longer to get my photos in Photoshop if I'm doing the first image, okay? Um, again, if you're interested in coaching, check it out. Send me a message with your inquiry uh, to rich at richbaum.com, and I'll reply back to you. We might even set up a phone call to, to do a pre-consultation, but I have helped people from all over the world um, get better, get faster, and uh, love to help you too. Okay, enough of that pitch. Okay, there we go. So I'm just going to click on both of these images, go up into edit, and I'm going to auto align because when I do compositing, um, you make sure that your images are aligned very, very well because if not, you'll get ghosting. So let's get back though to the ambient. So I'm just going to make a layer mask. I'm going to click on my ambient image. And I'm going to go down here and I'm going to hold Option on a Mac, Alt on a PC, and um, click Add a Layer Mask down here at the very bottom. Okay, there I go. So I've got my mask, which is the flash image, is over on top of the ambient image. But that's another tutorial for another time. So let's just start bringing in, I'm going to hit, make sure I have a, I'm going to hit X, make sure I have a white clicked so I can mask in or reveal the ambient. I'm going to click my paintbrush and uh, I'm going to make sure I'm on zero hardness and I'm up here on normal. Opacity is 100%. Flow is 20, but I'd urge you if you're beginning to bring it down to flow of about 10 until you get better at it. Okay, so now let's just start bringing in the um, ambient and I'm going to make my paintbrush bigger for the right hand side. Let's just bring it in. Okay, there we go. Really fast and easy. Now let's bring it in. Let's zoom in so you can see this. I'm going to fix my, um, re I'm going to fix that shadow up here. There we go. One, two, three. There you go. And it also adds in a little bit of life uh, to the ceiling because ceilings are not all white. And I don't mind having these natural shadows up here. Let's turn it off and on and see what I'm talking about. See, this ceiling doesn't look as natural to me as this ceiling does. So that's what I, I, I do. Now, I also, I also do my masking in layers. I do it in normal mode. You could try luminosity mode, which you bring down here, but sometimes luminosity mode, which in theory should only mask in the exposure value. It also sometimes masks in really weird colors especially for overexposed areas. So here I've got it on normal and it looks fine to me. So now let's deal with the front of this table. Let's just bring a little ambient and I'm just doing a little bit. And I even like the floor with that extra shine in there. 
Okay, a little bit here. There we go, here. Now let's get a little bit of shadows up here. And these are the things I'm getting out of my ambient exposure. Look at that, just adding in a teeny bit of shadows. Now these changes are very subtle, but I don't mind subtle. I think subtle is where it's at. Now let's bring in a little bit of ambient to get rid of that reflection of um, the, sh the glare from the flash in the room. That's a mistake I made. I should have probably fixed that earlier, but I'll show you how you can fix it. I'm just going to bring in a little bit of ambient here, a little bit there. And you can see, again, very subtle, but these subtleties are super important to me, my clients. Oh, look, I can even see myself there. So in the mirror, wait, in the reflection of the window, you can see. Let's go back. There I go. You can see me here. Barely see me. I think, yeah, you can see my light up here. I'm holding a flash up. So I'm just going to take it out. There we go. Oh, wait a second. What am I doing wrong? Whoops. I'm going to go to hit. I'm going to switch this to white up here. Okay. There I go. I'm just going to bring ambient in there. A little ambient in there. Blow out these windows just a little bit. Everybody talks about the windows being too crisp and clear. Well, I'm kind of in the middle of the camp. I don't mind them being crisp and clear. But then again, what am I showing here? I'm showing how close the neighbor's house is. So I'm adding in a little extra ambient right there. Okay, there we go. And let's see how that looks. Okay, I think that looks just fine. And I don't even mean it, mind it being darker back here. And, and if I wanted to, I could lighten it up in Lightroom if I wanted. And the other thing I can do uh, for my window, if I have a mistake, let's say I want to get rid of this um, reflection of the light up here. Easily what I can do now, I'm just going to hit Command E. And that's going to flatten my layers out. And I'm just going to do a little cloning up here. Where is my clone tool? There it is. Okay. And I'm just going to <clears throat> mask in a little bit of this over here. That's how you can get rid of issues and mistakes here. And I wouldn't get too carried away with it because um, it's something so far in the background, I don't think anybody's going to notice that. And I'm just going to do one more small piece right here. There we go. Bring it down right there. Okay, there we go. Perfect. I don't think you'd ever notice that. So let's look at it. Um, let's go bring it back into Lightroom, see if there's anything else we need to do with it. Okay, so there you can see it. I'm going to hit Command SW to flatten and return my image from Photoshop into Lightroom. And uh, I just want to tell you, Remember, we're just looking for three things in ambient. We're looking for um, exposure or luminosity. We're looking for, here again, we're looking for exposure, luminosity. We're looking for natural shadows, which we don't have the real shadows I want uh, right here. Okay, that's just no shadows. I don't like that. I mean, these are not natural, so I don't like that. So now let's go back into our final image. And this is what I just did. And one thing I'm going to do is add in a little final bump. I call that my final bump preset, which adds just a little bit of, you can see it right here. Make it a little bit crisper. Now, if I wanted to make it a little brighter, I could do my gradient tool again and add in a little more exposure to this room back here. Let's try that. And I'm going to make it a little cooler. And also you could add in shadows into that. So there you go. I think that looks just fine. Okay, so now let's go um, into another shot. Here is, I'll show you the final shot. Here's just a simple bedroom as we all have. And I've, um, this is another flambient image. So I'm going to take my ambient image right here and my flash image and show you what I'm going to do. With a flash image, I could certainly deliver here, but I just don't like it. It's too flashy on this side of the bed. There's no logical shadows down here. The ceiling is nice, but it's just lacking any feeling. So let's just look at the ambient exposure. What do I want here? Okay, so here I bit ISO 250 
And again, I'm at f7.1 because I'm on a crop sensor camera, and that's the aperture I use with my crop sensor Sony A, excuse me, A6000. And I'm here at 1 13th of a second exposure. Okay, so I'm getting good luminosity, and you can even see here, sure, there are blown out areas, as you can see here, blown out here, but I don't worry about that. My bell curve is a little bit over the middle, so it's, it's looking a little overexposed uh, on the histogram, but I like it. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to use my ambient yellow out bump. There I go. Now I'm going to bring up the exposure just a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to lose some of this green, overall green up here. So I'm just going to take out my green here. Watch the ceiling. It takes it out. And aqua too. I think that's going to be nice. And I'm even going to lower my orange and my yellow. Okay, now something else I could do in my ambient. Let's just reset this whole image. What I could do in my ambient is go up to my adjustment brush and I can use a thing called ceiling white preset. And all a ceiling white is is negative 60 on the saturation, little bit of blue, little towards blue cooler, and a little bit of white. And I've got my brush set to flow, set to 90%. And all I'm going to do is paint out the color in the ceiling and this wall. I've done this in other videos, and this video is not about this preset, but it's going to show you. It takes out some of the color cast. So basically, all I'm doing is prepping the image to be better to match and work with my flash image. Now, the reason we use flash is because it doesn't have as many color issues. We are controlling the color, and I'm at 1 80th of a second for the flash shot. So let's just bring in the flash in the ambient, and I'm going to hit Edit In, Open as Layers in Photoshop. Let's just see what this ambient exposure is going to do. So a rule I can tell you with ambient exposure is it's very difficult to say what your shutter speed's going to be. But if you're using an ISO of, let's say, 500 or, no, let's say uh, 320, or 400. I would say the average ambient exposure is going to be one tenth of a second, but that can change. That could go down to two seconds, or that could go up to one one hundredth of a second. So it's different. So there's no real answer to what exposure I'm going to do. Basically, I tether so I can see on my iPad when I'm shooting, I can see the exposure I'm getting. So that really helps me visually see this. So I set my exposure by seeing it visually. So right here, I'm just going to, I'm not even going to auto align these layers because that just takes up time. So what I want to do is to hold down option on a Mac, Alt on a PC and add a layer mask. Okay. Just make sure you're on brush and make sure you're on white. Okay. So I'm just going to bring in my ambient exposure and I'm going to start here. I'm just going to bring it in a little bit on the ceiling, a little bit over here, right there, a little bit under the bed, and voila, I am done. Okay, let's look at the difference between with my adjustments and without. This is why I'm using it. Again, it's very subtle, but I think you'll agree, it's much better than the single flash image. Okay, so now I'm gonna hit Command SW, bring it back into Lightroom, here you can see the final product, and I'm very happy with it. I, I might add a little bit of exposure right here. It looks a little dark, so I'm just going to hit my, ex my uh, adjustment brush and a little bit of exposure right there. There we go. Very subtle. Exposure brush is just great. Okay, there you go. So I hope this helped you to uh, grasp and, as I always say, internalize these concepts. And this concept of what I'm looking for in my ambient shot is uh, pretty basic. It's uh, something that I do by eye and I do by experience and feel. 
The more you do it, the better you'll get, the faster you'll get as always. So I want to say thank you for checking in with me and my YouTube channel. And I want to thank again Adorama for sponsoring this channel. Use that affiliate link. Helps make these free videos. Yes, free videos. And uh, I just want to let you know, uh, the more, again, the more you do this, the faster you'll get. So don't let it discourage you um, if it's taking a long time. That'll change real quick. Thanks again for joining me. I hope to see you on the next tutorial. And until we meet again, please go shoot smarter, shoot faster, make more money, have more fun, and uh, just go enjoy life. Okay, see you later. Bye.